Brain Rules One Sentence Summary Brain Rules teaches you how to be more effective at work and in life by providing proven facts about how your mind works better when you get enough sleep, exercise, and learn with all of your senses. Author's Favorite Quotation They discovered that the presence or absence of a sedentary lifestyle is one of the most important determinants of good aging. Johan Medina Make fists with your hands and hold them together. This is roughly the size of your gray matter, which allows you to regulate whatever you're doing right now. When you think at it like this, your brain appears to be quite small, yet it has a lot of potential. The big question is if you can make it better. Perhaps you still believe that an old dog cannot be taught new tricks. However, no matter how old we are, our minds can develop and improve. Brain Rules, 12 Principles for Surviving and Thriving at Work, Home, and School will teach you how to do just that. You'll know exactly what behaviors you need to have a happier and healthier mind after reading this book. Here are the three most useful productivity lessons I've learned. 1. Increase your physical and mental activity to improve your brain's and body's efficiency. 2. If you want your mind to perform better, figure out what your normal sleep cycle is and stick to it. 3. When learning, the more senses you use, the more knowledge you will remember. Are you ready to learn how to improve your gray matter? Let's get started. Lesson 1. Physical activity improves mental performance. If you exercise more, your brain and body will function better. It's fascinating to consider the evolution of our brain from the perspective of our forefathers. After all, the way their brains grew into what we have today was influenced by their daily activities. The average Homo sapiens walked or ran 10 to 20 kilometers every day. What does this imply for brain growth? It had to happen during exercise, implying that our brains work best now when we move around more. To function correctly, your mind requires food as fuel. When you exercise, your entire body, including your mind, improves its ability to absorb nutrients from food. This beneficial practice also promotes blood flow throughout the body, which aids in the formation of new blood vessels. Vitamins and minerals can travel around more freely, and waste may be disposed of more easily. Consider the road systems of ancient civilizations. The paths were first bumpy and difficult to navigate. The movement of commodities became more efficient once one engineer noticed the need to smooth them out. With it came easier access to a wide range of supplies. When you exercise, your blood flows more smoothly, which is the same thing that happens to your body. Another significant advantage of exercise is that it increases the production of hormones, many of which improve the tissues of your body. The brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, for example, aids in the formation of new cells. It also maintains the health of neurons and their connections. Our brains were designed to walk 12 kilometers every day. Move to increase your thinking abilities. Exercise brings blood to your brain, providing it with glucose for energy and oxygen to absorb the poisonous electrons that remain. It also increases the activity of a protein that maintains neurons connected. Doing aerobic activity twice a week cuts your risk of dementia in half. It lowers the chance of Alzheimer's disease by 60%. Lesson 2. Sleep well, think well. For best mental function, you need to figure out and stick to your own sleep cycle. Sleeping was deadly for our forefathers. If you slept out at the wrong time, you may easily be eaten by a predator. The fact that they put forth the effort to make it possible, and that we continue to do so now, indicates that it is critical to our health. Sleep, in its most basic form, rejuvenates our body and mind. You start to suffer if you don't get enough sleep. Not getting enough sleep has such a negative impact that skipping a week will result in a sleep debt the following week. And if you only get six hours or less of sleep per night for five days, 
you'll be just as cognitively impaired as if you hadn't slept for 48 hours. While you may believe that I know I need to get to bed sooner, you may actually have a sleep cycle that is just later. It is critical to comprehend this and follow it in order to maintain healthy mental and physical health. People who know their schedule and stick to it two-fourths of the time are intellectually stronger, according to studies. Night owls, or persons who like to stay up late, make up about 10% of the population. Larks are people that like to wake up early and account for 10% of the population. Everyone else is a hummingbird, flitting back and forth between staying up late and getting up early if you're serious in finding out what yours is, look up a quiz on Google. Stick to your type once you've identified it for improved mental performance. Lesson 3. When you try to receive information in both visual and audio modes at the same time, it's easier to learn. When the first Homo sapiens were still sketching on cave walls, your mind's integrative instincts began. What exactly does that imply? Because they were exposed to several senses at the same time, their brains evolved to take in information when all of their senses were active. You can and should do this today if you want to learn quickly. Another way to look about it is that the more senses you use when learning something, the more likely it is to stick with you. In one experiment, participants were shown a video of someone speaking with no sound. Their auditory cortexes, the parts of the brain that detect noise, were still alive. Surprisingly, when the same subjects saw a quiet video of someone merely making faces, this identical area went silent. In other words, when only one sense is used, learning is less efficient since fewer areas of the brain are active. Richard Meyer's research backs this up. He ran an experiment in which he divided people into three groups and gave them different types of information. Only hearing is allowed. Only seeing, observing, and hearing when it came time to recall the information they'd been given, by far, the group who was able to see and hear it did the best. It appears illogical that the more senses we use, the better we remember things. Shouldn't our brains be overworked as a result of this? Yes, it could be the case if we're multitasking. However, as science shows, if you really want something to linger in your mind, incorporate as many senses as possible in the experience.